right, guys, hello and welcome to another video on the Alexa Pi. Today we're going to be looking at how to uh, do a custom uh, HTTP, uh, HTTPS actually, doing the certificates and whatnot. So those of you that uh, have been waiting for, for this video, um, here it is. Basically what we're going to be doing is if you watched my previous videos on this Alexa Pi uh, stuff and using uh, Home Assistant in conjunction, so that way you can control the GPIO of your Pi with uh, the Alexa uh, app. Basically, what we're going to do is if you've watched those videos, you'll see that uh, you have to use AWS at some point. This video is to replace that. You don't have to use AWS if you don't want to. And those of you who don't know, that's Amazon uh, Web Services. You don't have to use it um, if you don't want to. However, the Alexa app requires a uh, certificate um, because it uh, does a secured uh, connection to your device. Uh, and whatnot, so you have to have uh, certificates and whatnot uh, set up for that. So this video is going to be going over how to do it yourself, and we are not going to be using uh, self-signed certificates because that, that can cause a whole other rigmarole that you have to deal with in, uh, when you have to update those certificates and all that jazz. And, and then I, I never really got it to work right with Alexa, so we're going to be using an open source uh, third-party solution that we will be using for this. So um, what we'll be using, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll jump right into it. We're going to be using CertBot is who we are going to be, be using. Now, CertBot, like I said, is open source. Um, and you just go to, I'll put all these links. There's going to be a lot of links going on. I'll put them all down in the, uh, in the description for you all. But uh, basically what CertBot is, is it is going to be the certificate uh, signing uh, authority or whoever, however you say that. But basically what you do is you're going to, we're going to download some software, okay, onto our Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then we are going to be um, signing the certificates through this cert bot is what we're going to be doing. And then once we get done with that, we will then attach that to our Alexa app. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be able to use that cert. And you don't have to use AWS if you don't want to. Because I know that there's a, there's a thing with AWS where you have to have a credit card or something. And a lot of people don't like that. Um, even though they don't charge you, they don't charge you unless, unless you want, uh, certain things that, uh, do cost money, but they don't charge you, but yet they still require it. So some people just don't want to put that information out there, or maybe some people don't have that. So this is an alternative, uh, method for doing it. First things first though, what we do need to do is you do need to set up a uh, dynamic DNS of some sort. So one that comes to mind, let me open a new tab, um, is DuckDNS, except I spelled that wrong. Uh, DuckDNS.org is, I believe, what it is. This is one that works quite well. Um, it's basically a free dynamic, uh, hosting, you know, I think we talked about it a little bit in the previous video, so I'm not going to go into what this is, but you sign up for this, um, and then configure it in your router. And there are tons of videos on this as well as another reason why I love home assistant. Home assistant is, is looking to be a pretty good application. A lot of you have asked me why I didn't use other ones. This is another reason why is home assistant has documented this whole process, even with duck DNS and they call it setup encryption using let's encrypt, which let's encrypt is, is basically cert bot. Okay. So they sh walk you through how to set this up. All of it is documented. It is fantastic. Um, especially for people like me, I like to keep it quite simple. I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel if I don't have to. Okay. And so home assistant does all the heavy lifting for you. Um, I'll put this link in the description as well. Um, it's just fantastic. So you need to go ahead and set that up. Then lastly, you'll have to configure your router and we need to do a few, oh, there's my AVG. We need to do a couple uh, router configurations, all right? So first off, you need to configure the DDNS. I'm using an Asus router uh, or Asus, however you pronounce that. Um, there's the DDNS tab right here. That's where you'll set up your DDNS. Mine's different. I didn't use DuckDNS. Um, if you buy an Asus router, they have their own uh, dynamic DNS uh, stuff basically already built in. So that's what I'm using. Uh, but anyway, you'll set that up. Then you come to your port forwarding sessions. And I think, I think you can go to portforward.com or portforward.org and select whatever router that you're using and it'll tell you how to port forward it. But the first thing you need to do is port forward, depending on which, uh, you want to do, um, my ISP blocks port 80. So I can't use port 80, but if you 
are in a region where your ISP does not block port 80, which 80 is the generic uh, HTTP port, okay? If they don't block it, then you need to add it. I went ahead and added it here so you'd see what it looks like. You would add port 80 um, is your port range, and then you would forward it to your Raspberry Pi, which this is my uh, Raspberry Pi's IP address on, on, on my network, um, is this dot 31. And then you say that you want to forward port 80 from the outside world, Basically, I'm sorry, guys, I have allergies and so I'm I'm itching. So if I, I may have to sneeze here and there. So it's been it's been crazy around here. here in Kansas. It's been like warm. It's just just bizarre for this time of year. Normally we have snow anyway. Uh, so you want to forward this outside port 80 to the port 80 on your Raspberry Pi. That's what this is telling me. And you want to forward both TCP and UDP uh, connections. OK, now. Those of you that are like me and you can't uh, do port 80 because your ISP blocks it before it comes to your router or even before it comes to your cable modem for that matter, um, you can use port 443, which is the TLS uh, way of doing it. So what I do is I take port 443, okay, and I redirect it to my Pi, but my home assistant is listening since it's not port 80, it's going to be on port 8123, so I need to remap it. So... 443 remaps to your Pi on port 8123. And 123 is the default one. I think you can change that in that configuration.yaml file. I think you can change that port if you don't like 8123. So um, that's what you do. And same thing for both TCP and UDP. That's it for the router configuration. So once you're done with the router configuration, we need to slide right on to the cert bot. Now, I have already... Um, performed this on this Raspberry Pi, so I'm not going to do it again, uh, but I will show you the commands that you're going to use, okay? So that's my plan. I've got my little notes here. So I'm going to run through it uh, as quickly as I possibly can. Um, you can pause the video if you need more time, but I'm going to try to run through it fairly quickly so this video doesn't get exorbitantly long. We're already almost 10 minutes now, so I got I to gotta pick up the pace. So um, anyway, so first thing we need to do is we need to um, download the software, and that is basically written right here. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, it's written right here. We're going to be doing this stuff that's in in this in this. Let's encrypt. We're going to be doing this section. This is if you're using Docker. See, Home Assistant isn't built specifically for the Raspberry Pi. It is built for any Linux install. You can use it. So um, they have pretty much everything documented here. It's fantastic. So this is what we're going to do. So first things first, we need to, uh, we need to make a directory called certbot. And you'd hit enter. I've already made one. So we're going to cd to certbot. Okay, and inside um, we're going to download basically this using the command wget https dl.eff.org slash certbot auto. And when you hit enter, that will download this certbot auto. It's going to download that. Okay, now what that's going to do is that's going to install and config certbot um, for you. Okay, now this is only one method of installing certbot. Okay, so don't crawl all over me and tell me that there's other ways to do it. Yes, there is other ways to do it. This one was just simplest uh, for me and using the Raspberry Pi. It was the simplest for me. Okay, so there are other ways to do it. I think there's some custom installs through apt-get, but uh, this one worked uh, pretty clean and slick for me. So that's what I'm going to do. So once you get that, you're going to do you're going to change mode on that and you're going to add uh, the A plus execute. You're going to add the execute to it. Cert bot auto. And hit enter, and that will give uh, the correct permissions for it so you can run it. So we're going to run it with a dot slash certbot. Well, actually, you know what? I may just, I may just see. I, I, th I think I have that command saved. Let me pull my notes up on my other screen because I don't want to type it wrong for you guys. And there is a little bit of a difference, okay? Uh, the command that's listed in uh, at the time that the uh, the documentation was written for home assistant uh the command was not um is is actually kind of old i'm sorry i'm trying to cut cut and paste this so my my brain is doing trying to do two different things and i'm i'm failing at it uh let's get this put over here okay so what the deal is is it is uh this one right here this preferred challenges that is different from the command that you'll see even on the cert bot stuff let me grab 
uh, another, hold on, I need my CertBot docs. CertBot has on here, tells you what forms you can run. Oh, my, uh, my niece just came up to me. Hang on just a second. Hi. You're just talking to yourself. You know, actually, I'm recording a video so I can teach other people. Yeah. But what's that blue thing up there? The weird thing? No, the blue thing. The blue thing? Oh, that? It's it's an old Easter egg. Can I have it? Do you want it? Okay. Yeah, you can have it. You can play it. It comes apart. Okay. What do you want to put in it? I want to put something, something golden. Something golden? <laughs> That's my little niece. She's 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 over here playing, and she wants to she wants to see what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, okay. So back to what we were doing. Uh, down through here. Let's see if I can find it. I think I went past it. Okay, here we go. So what we got. I zoomed in, it hosed it. There we go. Okay, so what we got right here is um, the two different ones. If you're using port 80, you're gonna use this uh, command in let's see can i can i do this like put this together It'd be so awesome if i could put it together where is that at where did i highlight that at there it is okay so see this section you're gonna do cert bot auto cert only okay and then standalone then preferred chat what this part right here is actually one of these two depending on which port you're going to use if you're going to be using port 80 then you're going to use uh, this HTTP 01 with the standalone support challenges. Now, this is what's different. The standalone supported challenges, it doesn't hurt anything if you accidentally uh, use this uh, switch uh, in here. Instead of using preferred challenges, you use the standalone support challenges. You'll just get an error that tells you to use this one, this preferred challenges. Okay, so that happened to me. So it's going to be preferred challenges, and then you're going to either do HTTP 01, if you're using port 80, or you're gonna use the TLS SNI01, okay, if you're using port 443. Now for me, since I have to use port 443 because 80 is blocked, I'm using the TLS SNI01, okay? So you guys do that. Then email, and you put in your email address. I'm not quite sure what that's used for. I didn't read through here to see if you absolutely have to have an email address but maybe you do for validating that you're not a bot or something. Anyway, then um, then now you need to type dash D and you need to put your domain. So the one that you created for uh, like on the duck DNS, the one that you created, that's what you'll put in here. Okay. So you'll put that in here. And then once you're done with that, hit enter and it'll go ahead and it will create everything. And it shouldn't, as long as your, your domain is reachable and whatnot, it should create um, all the certificates and everything uh, for you, okay? So what we're gonna do, okay guys, so I've cleared that out. So now um, what we're gonna do is now that we're we're done with that, I've backed up to my home directory, I'm gonna CD to Etsy, let's encrypt, okay? That's where all of our stuff's gonna be. Now, here's the thing, we're gonna have to change um, the permissions because all of this is done under root, okay? So now I've already changed the permissions on mine, but see how this is root users? What we're gonna have to do is we have to put the Home Assistant user, since that's what Home Assistant runs under, is the Home Assistant user. We have to put the Home Assistant user um, in the users group. That's what I did. You don't have to, you could create your own group if you wanted to, and there's other videos that teach how to do that. You could create your own group or whatever, but um, I just found it simpler to put it in the users group Okay, um, since it's already there and everything, um, because and then give and then change the group. Okay, change the owner or the yeah the group on all these directories because all these directories right here, this accounts, archive, CSR, all that it was root root. So meaning only root could access it. So uh, basically, when your Alexa Pi goes to uh, 
send certificates and whatnot for the HTTPS stuff, your uh, home assistant isn't able to get to the certificates. And if it can't get to the certificates, then it's, it's just not going to work. So um, because it doesn't have permission. So what I did was I changed it using the command change uh, own, and then you do first the user root, and then the next one and roots fine. And then the next is the group. So any user in that group, so root users, users, and then I just did star, just did star. And then that changes everything. So then everything is root users. A couple more places we need to change permissions is you CD to the live folder. And in here will be your uh, your uh, example, your, like your, your website, okay? So you'll change own there, uh, root users, and then star, do it again. And then go ahead and CD inside of here and change it there as well. Once you're done changing all those paths, then you go back and you need to do the same thing to the archive folder and your, your, your folder will be in there too. Change uh, this one to users because it'll be root root. And then inside inside this folder is where your uh, certificates will be. Okay. And so then change the permission on all those to be root users. Okay. Now, since we changed that all to users, we need to assign home assistant, the user to the users group. Gosh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of users. All right. So we're going to see you to Etsy. Let's go back to Etsy. And we're going to vim the group file. Oops. Uh, sudo vim it so that way I can actually get into it. And then in here, we're going to look for users. Okay. And there it is. There's the users group right here. And you can see I've already added the home assistant to it. Okay. So normally it just has pi. You just put a comma and then type home assistant. That's it. Simple. And then now that will give home assistant... Uh, the permission to access those folders since we changed all the group to users. So as long as any users that are in that group can access uh, those folders since I assigned users as the group to all of them. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, look up group and user permissions and whatnot for Linux and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So now that that's done, now we need to um, configure the uh, YAML file, like I like to say, it, the YAML File. So you're going to cd to uh, home, home assistant dot home assistant. All right. And then we're going to open that up. Okay, guys. So I have, uh, I'm going to vi this, uh, vi this configuration.yaml file. And inside here, We've got right here, we've got the SSL certificates, okay? So basically what all you have to do is you have to add these two lines, SSL certificate and then the path to where the full chain.pem is, which is in our Let's Encrypt in the live folder and in your, your example.example.com, whatever your domain is, and then slash full chain. Same thing with the SSL key. You will add this line right there, okay? So that's all you do is add those two lines. If you haven't added an API password, you need to add that too. So you add all those lines and save it okay so you're going to right quit it and then what you'll do is you will uh check your configuration if you need to know how to check the configuration to make sure you don't have any errors just uh look at one of my other videos or get on the home assistant website and it'll let you know how to check it then all you got to do is restart your home assistant and it should be good to go so we're going to go into the next part and we'll look at the alexa software Okay, guys, so now I've got the uh, Alexa development uh, dashboard up here. So I've logged in and everything. So I'm going to go to my Alexa skill, go into edit. Okay. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the configuration side. Now, previously I had AWS Lambda chosen and I used the Lambda function, which we configured in the last set of videos. This time I'm choosing HTTPS, choosing which region I'm in. I'm in North America. And then you put in your uh, website. Now, where this comes from, this is the same web address that we did in the, the JSON file when we did the WS Lambda. It is going to be, and let's see, let me see if I can't zoom in on this so it's bigger so you guys can see it. So what it's going to be, let me here, let me copy it into something that you can see. Okay, so it's going to be like this. You're going to do your website, okay, so your, your that duck DNS thing, whatever that comes out to be then slash API slash Alexa, and then you're going to put in your Raspberry Pi password. Remember that password, the API password that was in the configuration.yaml file? 
that's this is where you type that password in. Where all these X's are, you'll put in your password here. Okay, so that's what you do. That's the the one that you use. You're gonna hit and you know the next button. On this next field for the SSL certificate, you're going to choose the first radial option. The My Development Endpoint has certificates from a trusted uh, certificate authority. Okay, so and that's CertBot. CertBot is the uh, certificate authority. Okay, so you're going to do that. Once you're done with that, we will move on to testing it. And you should get, when you move to test, you should get this little enabled flag. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we'll see if we can't test this out. And see, here it is. It gives you your, your deal. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and test this out with a test phrase. So I'm going to ask, or I'm going to say Alexa. That way she goes, boom. <laughs> I'm going to say Alexa. And I'm going to say, ask home assistant to activate uh, uh, test LED, test LED on. I believe that's the way I named it in my utterance. Whatever yours is, that's what you can do. You're going to hit Ask Home Assistant, and we'll see what happens. All right, right on. So here's the service request. So here's the basically in JSON format how it's going to uh, contact your Pi. As long as it reaches, as it goes through, and it hits uh, your HTTPS and the certificates and everything works, you should get this. And basically, you get your your text basically alexa said okay activated okay so this is what you want to see if you get any kind of errors in here check um your xml files uh check your configuration files uh check um all those different things make sure that you can use like like i can i can use my cell phone if i can hold it up i'll use my cell phone because i can cut to 4g and when I cut to the 4G side, I'm basically not on my home network. I'm not on my Wi-Fi. And try to do HTTPS and then colon slash slash. And then your, your that address that you put in, the one that you made in deck DNS. And it should redirect you and take you straight to your uh, your Raspberry Pi that's, on, that's got your home assistant on it. If it does not, then you need to check your settings. Check your port forwarding. Make sure the ports are forwarding properly, that you got that right and whatnot, because that's probably the reason. The The error messages that this gives are kind of convoluted, so you're kind of on your own looking at it. But uh, anyway, check things like that. Check your port forwarding. Check your dynamic DNS. Make sure that um, it can, you when you ping it, from another computer or something like that, that it gives you the outside address that is your outside address, things like that. Uh, that's kind of some troubleshooting to do, but this basically shows you that uh, it does work. This went out, um, pinged my uh, home assistant and it activated the test LED on. Now I could even do, I can turn it off. If I do off and hit ask home assistant. Yep, and I get even if, with the off, I get it. So there you go, guys. That is very, hopefully we didn't take too long. Yeah, we took about 30 minutes, but that's how you set it up using the HTTPS instead of using Amazon Web Services, just in case if you wanted an option there. This is how you uh, configure it and do your own uh, certificate authority using CertBot, which is open source, which open source is awesome. Great stuff. So anyway, guys, that'll wrap it up since this has gone on long enough. Hope you guys enjoy this. Make sure to like and subscribe and share this video. It really helps the channel a lot. Got some more videos coming. Um, make sure and subscribe to me on Twitter. Uh, definitely add me on Twitter because I'm at M-I-Sperry-E-E. -E. Uh, add me uh, because I, I I put up uh, different things onto Twitter. Um, sometimes they're funny things that I'll find, uh, especially around Christmas time and things like that. I'll put up funny pictures and stuff, but mostly because I communicate with you guys. So Google or you YouTube, Google, whoever they are, still has not uh, really gotten a good way of, of notifying people or me being able to put out a text notification. I think they're working on it and maybe I just haven't seen it yet, but I don't know. So I put out notifications on like if movies are going to be delayed, if videos are going to be you know out soon, if I've figured certain aspects of it out, what the next video out is coming is going to be. I do that through Twitter. So guys, definitely check me out on Twitter um, because uh, you'll get more updates from me since I'm more vocal on Twitter than I am here on YouTube because it takes too long to make a video. Anyway, guys, Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helps you out. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments down below. If I can't get to them, uh, hopefully one of you guys, uh, the other viewers, um, I like to keep my comment section kind of like an open forum. So um, you guys can all bounce ideas off of each other uh, on this topic. 
and I will chime in whenever I can. I am a busy guy. I do all this just by myself. I don't have a team of people to help me answer uh, real technical comments. So I apologize for those of you that have real technical questions because I have to. I actually have to sit down myself and spend time debugging or testing your uh, question and seeing if I can't reproduce your issue and basically doing Raspberry Pi support <laughs> or whatever it may be, Arduino support, uh, pick microcontroller support, whatever. So it takes some time. So I apologize if I can't get back to you, but please, everybody, let's do a community thing here. If you see somebody, read the comments as well as watch the video. If you see somebody struggling and you can help, by all means, help them. All right, guys, rattled long enough. Take care. We'll see you next time.